this video, we're going to take a look at the new mask editor and smart masks. So let's start here with the matte plate texture set. And I'm just going to solo this so that we can just focus on a small area for this demonstration. OK, so uh, here in the layer stack, um, I just have a few uh, smart materials that um, I've taken here from the materials tab. I just drag and drop these guys in. So I have this uh, concrete dirty. Uh, and then on top, I just utilize this copper worn. So I'll just enable this. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm mistaken about that. You would get the smart materials from the actual smart materials tab in the shelf. And so what we want to do is mask this copper worn smart material. So what I'm going to do is just right click and I'm going to add a black mask, which is going to give me a layer mask. And now I'm going to come over here to the add effect button and I'm going to click this and then choose add generator from the pop up menu. So here I'll click the generator button. And towards the bottom, we have this new mask editor. Now, the mask editor replaces the mask builder from previous versions of Substance Painter. So here I've just enabled the mask editor, and let's just take a look at these options. The mask editor gives us various controls for modulating the image map inputs. So here, under image inputs, you can see that I have maps such as ambient occlusion and curvature. And these image inputs are fed directly from the inputs that are set here within the additional maps rollout. So for example, let's take a look at ambient occlusion and curvature, and we'll start with curvature. So here we have curvature, and notice here that we have a value of 0.5. If I pull this value all the way up to 1, we're basically activating this curvature effect here to our mask. And if I take the slider and pull this all the way down to 0, we're essentially turning that off. So in our case, let's take a look at working with curvature. Now, if we want to further manipulate the curvature settings, we can click this button, and we get several controls for modifying that incoming curvature map. So for example, we could change the blending mode. Uh, we also have mode that allows us to target things like specifically the edges or the cavities. Or here we have a, a mode called dual that is basically a mix of both the cavities and the edges. In this case here, we'll switch this to edges. We also have sliders, which again, further target value ranges within that incoming curvature map. Now what's very interesting about this new editor is that we can supply these texture inputs that can be blended on top of effects such as curvature and ambient occlusion. So for example, let's take a look at this first texture. Here I'm going to come over here to my procedurals and I'm going to add a texture input. So for example, I'm going to start with this grunge 13. I'll just left click and drag and drop that here onto this texture input. Now this texture input could be a bitmap, but new in Substance Painter 2, this input can be a substance itself. So we're basically chaining a substance within a substance. And notice that since I supplied a substance to this image input, I now have the substance controls. So here in the viewport, I'm looking at the material. If I hold down the Alt key and just left click on the mask, I can quickly set this to mask mode. So let's come back to our mask editor. We don't see the effect of our grunge map just yet because our texture here is set to zero. And so what I'm going to do is just take the slider and pull this all the way up to one. Now, if I kind of zoom in on this area, you can see that this new grunge is being added to my curvature. So let's come over here to this texture input, and I'm going to click this to expose the properties. And you can see that the blending mode is actually set to overlay. So what I'm going to do here is actually switch this to linear dodge add. And let's just zoom out a little bit here in the viewport. Now we have uh, several options here for controlling uh, the value range of that uh, texture input. Uh, one of the things that we can do as well is we can switch, switch this to uh, triplanar mode so we can reduce any seams that we would get on the model from this grunge input. And I'll do a few settings here, like maybe let's just adjust the overall scale and perhaps uh, just uh, decrease the contrast. Now again, we're working with a substance. So if I come down to the image input for this texture, I have my substance properties. So here I'll click the random seed button and I can randomize this substance texture. Or I can change maybe the balance, just whatever settings are a part of this substance that's, that's driving this texture input. So here I'm just making a few changes to this. Now what I would like to do is start to work with my ambient occlusion. So uh, here, let's come back to uh, the top here to my ambient occlusion. Notice it's set to zero, the slider, so it's off. So we'll pull this value all the way up to one. So we're just utilizing the ambient occlusion. And uh, let's make a few changes here to the parameters. So in this case, I'm going to uh, switch my blending mode here to uh, linear dodge add. And I'm going to click this invert button to invert the value. And now I have my balance control. So here I can adjust the overall balance to this. And so now that I have this in place, I think I might actually come back here to my texture and change my blending mode uh, from add to subtract. 
and again make a few changes here to the actual contrast and brightness settings. So as you can see, using this mask editor, I have a lot of flexibility on how I'm taking these multiple image inputs and compiling them together to make an overall mask for my material. So here I'll hit M on the keyboard to view my material, and here's what I have thus far. So now I'm going to utilize this second texture input. So here underneath my image inputs, I have an option to utilize a secondary texture. And uh, I'm going to come back over here to my grunge maps and I'm going to grab this uh, grunge 10. So left click, drag and drop and place this here into the secondary texture. And here I'm just going to go back into my mask mode. So hold down alt and then left click on my mask. And let's take a look at the settings here for this texture. Now, again, by default, we don't see anything because the value set to zero. Let's pull this all the way up here to one. And let's take a look at some of the modes that we have. So for instance, my blending mode, I'm going to set this to add. And I think I'm going to set this here to triplanar and adjust my scale. Now I'm going to just move down here to the actual substance properties that I have and make a few adjustments here. So here is the mask that I have produced with the mask editor. Let's hit M on the keyboard to go back into our material mode. And so here is what the material looks like as it's masked. So as you can see, the mask editor gives us a very flexible and easy way to generate these complex masks. So now that I've created this mask, I can actually save this as a smart mask. Now a smart mask is new in Substance Painter 2 and it works very much like a smart material where a smart material is a collection of your layer stack, a smart mask is a collection of your effect stack. So to save this as a smart mask, I can just simply right click and choose create smart mask. Here in my smart masks tab, if I just scroll down, you can see my new mask is created here for me. So if I come back to this guy and let's say that I remove this mask, so now we're going back to the very beginning of the video where I had two smart materials and I just wanted to quickly mask this. I can now come over here to my smart mask and just simply left click and drag and drop this onto a layer to apply my mask. With smart masks, I can build up a vast library of these masking effects and you can see how this can save you a ton of time when you're starting to mask your materials. And again, just like smart materials, smart masks, you can come back to the settings and everything is fully available for you to further edit.